Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today we were going to talk about the names of Allah, Al Aziz, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is also known as Al Aziz. Now, in the past few months, we've been going over the names of Allah, and I focused mainly at the beginning on Rahma, the mercy, the beneficence, the love of Allah Al Wadud, Al Allah Al Musta'an, the one that helps. All of these parts or names or characteristics of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that are what you might call the softer side. So today we're going to talk about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as Al Aziz. Now Aziz comes from the root Ain Za 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 Za, which points to four main meanings. The first main meaning is to be mighty and powerful. The second is noble and elevated. And the third main meaning is to be invincible, while the fourth is rare and unattainable. So we're talking about the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're talking about the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Linguistically, alayas originally means strength, which is kuwa, severity, shida, and conquest, um, ghalaba. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points to these three concepts, which mean nobility and to prevail and to be dominant, and which means mighty and powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al Aziz. As such, He is the noble one. No one is like Him. He is Ghalib and has overcome everything in that He has subdued it. SubhanAllah, this is from Ibn Kathir. And Ibn Qurtubi says, and he is the invincible who cannot be reached and overcome. So when we're talking about Allah al-Aziz in terms of linguistics, we're talking about power, severity, conquest, strength, nobility, subhanAllah, the dominance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al Karim. He is generous. He is giving. He is loving. But he is also strong enough to back everything up. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, he can back it up. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to happen, he can back it up. He is the almighty, the all-powerful. So this, this concept characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of power and might. Now, the name Al-Aziz has been mentioned in various forms in 92 times in the Quran. For example, Allah says what means and know that Allah is almighty, all wise. So here, remember before when we talked, I always discussed that it's important to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts together in terms of his names and characteristics. So Allah is almighty, but he is wise in the usage of this might. It is not something that's willy-nilly. It's not something that is going to harm people. Allah uses this power with wisdom. And it is this wisdom that backs up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's might. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almighty, all able of retribution. Allah also says, and verily, you Lord, he is truly the almighty, the most merciful. So here, Allah is putting his name, Aziz, with retribution. His name, Al-Aziz, with mercy. He puts it with wisdom. So he's showing us that this is not the might of a normal person. It's not the might of someone like us. Because human beings have a kind of power. Human beings can overpower each other. But when we do it, when we utilize our might, we do it in such a way that it is not necessarily merciful, that it is not necessarily wise. And usually the ones that use their might and their power do not, do not usually go with mercy and with wisdom. They do it out of greed. They do it out of desire. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all of that. Ibn Kathir said that Al-Aziz means he is the mighty, dominant over all things. Therefore, 
His majesty is never violated. Due to his might, greatness, irresistible, pow irresistible power, and pride. And Ibn Jarir said, Al-Aziz means the strong in his retribution, mighty in his revenge. None can overcome him and none can resist him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he decides a matter, he can and does back it up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wants something to happen, it will happen. Nothing, no one can stop it. When he wants something not to happen, nothing can make it happen. SubhanAllah. He is the one that his greatness, his power cannot be overcome by anything or anyone. Sheikh al Sa Saadi said, Al-Aziz is the one to whom belongs might and honor in its entirety. The might and honor of strength, of conquest, and of prevention. He has prevented any of his creation from encompassing and grasping him. He is omnipotent over everything that is in existence. All of creation, the whole of creation is subjected and indebted to him, Allah, yielding before his greatness. Nothing and no one on this earth can overcome Allah. The power and might is only with Allah, the ultimate power. There is no power. There is no capability except through Allah. No matter what anybody on this earth tries to do, if every single creation got together, they could not overcome what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to happen or make what Allah doesn't want to happen, happen. Everything is under the power of Allah. Now, Al-Aziz means the one who is impregnable, unable to be captured, none will prevail against him. Al-Aziz is the irresistible who subdues everything with his might. He is the strong and powerful. He, Ta'ala, is unique. There is nothing like unto him and nothing is comparable to him and nothing can go against him and nothing can stop him. He is the ultimate power. He is the ultimate might. He is Allah al-Aziz, subhana Allah. Now, to believe in Allah ta'ala, in the name of al-Aziz, to understand al-Aziz, we have to see that he is the one who is never overpowered or resisted. This gives us, the Muslims, the confidence, the courage in Allah, because we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will subdue everything. When we have a problem, when we have uh, someone that we're up against or something that we're up against, having the faith and the confidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prevail about, above everything and anything that is against us is part of our deen. It's part of our faith. It's part of our la ilaha illallah understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing can stop what he wants. Nothing can make what he doesn't want happen. Allah is the mighty. No one can stand against him. Whatever Allah wills will happen, even if it's against the will of the people and whatever he wills not, it will not happen or occur, even if everybody wants it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. And as the one who knows everything, he is the one that has put everything in effect, that has put all of life into effect. So he knows what is best for us. He knows what is good. He knows the final plan. He is the one who created the plan. He is the one who is perp perp perpetrating the plan. He is making the plan happen. And he is the one that will have and has the power to make sure that everything goes exactly as he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wants it to go. So we, when we have faith and we understand this, it makes it so much easier on us. It gives us the peace that we know, the peace that we need in order to go forward because we know this is the will of Allah. We know nothing can stop the will of Allah. If Allah wants something for us, it's going to happen. If Allah doesn't want something for us, it's not good for us. And he's going to make sure it does not happen. 
So this is Allah al-Aziz. So when we go to examples to understand, let us take the story of, of uh, Pharaoh and Mos Musa alayhi salam, Moses. Subhanallah, the Pharaoh tried to kill every newborn baby boy. He knew about the prophecy that there will come one from the Jews, from Beni Israel, that will overcome him. And he felt that he was above Allah, a'udhu billah, and he isn't. He tried to have killed every single newborn, every baby. The, the, the soldiers were given orders to kill all the male babies of Beni Israel because he knew that a prophet would be coming from them. And he knew that this prophet would take his kingdom from him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Aziz with all of his soldiers, with all of his might, with all of this knowledge that he had, he was not able to stop Musa alayhi salam, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Aziz, showed his power and his will that Musa alayhi salam be born and even raised in the home and the castle of the Pharaoh himself by his wife. Subhanallah, imagine. He thinks that he has all this power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the child and put him in his house to show him the complete lack of power. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no power. There is no capability except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even when the Pharaoh tried to kill Musa alayhi salam, he and his ministers himself, the Pharaoh and his ministers, and all of his soldiers were killed. The power of Allah is incontroversible. You cannot fight Allah. When Allah wants something to happen, it will happen. It doesn't matter who or what comes up against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Pharaoh, his soldiers, were nothing. Nothing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Aziz. He is the most powerful. Subhanallah. Even another example, when we look to Yusuf alayhi salam, and his brothers who wanted to kill him, they were not able to do so. Allah decreed another matter for him. And it was Allah, Allah had set already and decided and used his power. And he brought Yusuf, Yusuf alayhi salam to the land of Egypt. And he was diverted from being killed by his brothers. He was diverted from being harmed by the people that were against him, the women who wanted to go, who went against him, the king that put him in the prison. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Aziz. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the full power and the control over the affairs of Yusuf. He had the full power and control over the affairs of Musa alayhi salam. He has the full power and control over us and all of eternity. Everything is in the hands of Allah, subhanAllah. But we think we have power. We think we have some sort of control. And it's when we realize that we have no power, we have no control, that everything is in the hands of Allah. And when we submit our affairs to Allah and leave them there, the thing that you and I think is best if Allah knows that it is not best, it will not happen. We don't know everything. We cannot control anything, much less everything. We think we have control. And this is the thing. It's our idea that we have control that causes us the greatest problems in this life. Because we want to change the behavior of so-and-so. We want to change the outcome of such and such. We want to be in control, but we have no control. We have to recognize that the control is in the hands of Allah. And when we renounce this control, when we recognize that we don't have it, that is when we have wallahi peace. The Jews tried to kill Isa alayhi salam, but Allah raised him up body and soul unto himself because Allah is all powerful, all wise. 
Similarly, the pagans of the Quraysh wanted to kill the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They wanted to imprison him. They wanted to expel him from his town. And they tried to prevent people from embracing Islam. They fought people, they persecuted people. SubhanAllah. And yet the people came back like Bilal alayhi salam, ahad, ahad. There's only one God, la ilaha illallah. It doesn't matter how much the people want to change. They want to keep us from being Muslims. They want to keep us from practicing our deen. They want to keep us from having any power, but the power is not with them. Power is with Allah, subhanAllah. They tried to urge the Jews and the hypocrites of Medina to fight him, but none of this prevented Islam from spreading, not only in the Arabian Peninsula, subhanAllah, now it is in the entire world to the point that the Arabian Peninsula is not even the greatest the greatest number of Muslims that exist. Our largest Muslim nation is Indonesia, not Saudi Arabia, not Kuwait. It is Indonesia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who established Islam. Allah is the one who will protect Islam. Allah is the one that will raise and lower the Muslims. We have no control. There's only one thing you and I control, and that is our own beliefs and our own actions. We can control what we do, how we react, how we act, our halal and our haram. We can control this because we're the ones who are accepting or not accepting to do the haram, accepting or not accepting to do the halal. That's the only thing that we can control. And even then, we may want to do something and Allah will prevent us from it. SubhanAllah. All of the true control is in the hands of Allah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The powerful, the honorable, and the noble in this life and the hereafter are only those whom Allah has imbued with honor. Allah says what means, say, O Muhammad, O Allah, possessor of the kingdom, you give the kingdom to whom you will, and you take the kingdom away from whom you will, and you imbue with honor whom you will, and you humiliate whom you will. In your hand is the good. Verily, you are able to do all things. Any honor that we have in this life is from Allah. Any humiliation that we have in this life is from Allah, and it's also a result of our own choices. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who removes the honor. Allah lets us to do wrong and do wrong and do wrong and to do evil and to do evil and to do evil until he gets to a point where it's like, that's it. And he removes the cover from us and shows who and what we really are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-ghafoor forgive and cover us always. SubhanAllah. May Allah honor us always. May we not be from those that he removes the honor. Anyone in this life who wants sovereignty needs to ask the sovereignty from Allah because he is the owner of sovereignty. Allah says what means whoever desires honor through power then to Allah belongs all the honor. So if we want honor, we need to ask Allah. If we want sovereignty, then we need to ask Allah. Nobody on this earth is truly sovereign. No one. Everybody has to answer to someone. Whether it be to a leader in terms of the country or a leader in terms of our home, we all answer to someone. The man, even after he's married, he answers to his parents. The woman, when she marries, she answers to her husband. The children answer to their parents. And all of us answer to the leaders. We have no sovereignty. SubhanAllah, the amount of power that humans have over us, of course, is different from person to person, uh, place to place. In some places, the leaders don't give any rights to the people. And in other places, they give too many rights to the people. 
Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put over us whom he wills. And he will put over us the one that he knows that we need to be there for whatever, either as a protection to us or as a test to us. But the true sovereignty, the true power is with Allah. If it gets to be too much, where do we go? We go to Allah. Ya Allah, help me. Ya Allah, remove this problem. Ya Allah, remove this person. Ya Allah, remove this evil. Ya Allah, remove this trial. We go to Allah. The true power, the true sovereignty, the true honor is only with Allah. And whatever remnants we have of it in this life is nothing compared to the power of Allah, compared to the honor of Allah, compared to the sovereignty of Allah. SubhanAllah. And if we seek honor with other than Allah, without obeying Allah and following the way of the believers, then he has shown hostility to Allah. If we try to get power away from the way of Allah, if we try to be over people as oppressors, as people to harm others, away from what Allah has commanded of us, away from the belief and following of Allah, subhanAllah, while showing hostility to Allah and to his law by befriending his enemies and thinking this is the way of attaining honor, Allah has told us what means those who take disbelievers for awliya, protectors or helpers or friends, instead of believers, do they seek honor with them? All honor is with Allah alone. We go with those who want to destroy Islam. We go with those who want to destroy Muslims. We go with those who hate Allah, who hate Islam, who hate Muslims. And we make them our companions and our assistants. We work with them because we want power. In doing so, we are putting ourselves against the law. There is no power, no capability except with Allah. Allah is al Aziz. He is the mighty. Do we think that we have a chance? Allah might give us respite for a few years. Let us think that we have something. When in actuality, we have nothing. Nothing but self-destruction. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, do you think that this life is anything? Even if you get a tiny piece of this life, it's still nothing. Now, if we want to get honor from Allah, there are ways, the Prophet ﷺ said, charity does not diminish the wealth. Allah enhances the honor of the one who forgives and the one who humbles himself for the sake of Allah. Allah exalts him in rank. So if we want to attain honor in this life, we need to start forgiving people. We need to be humble. We need to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to give charity. We need to help people. We need to open our heart and have rahma and have beneficence and have forgiveness. And through this, Allah will increase our honor, the true honor, subhanAllah. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called his book, Al-Quran, Al-Aziz. Allah says what means verily those who disbelieve in the reminder, meaning the Quran, when it came to them shall receive the punishment. And verily, it is an honorable, respected book. This book is Allah's speech. It is from the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sent down by Allah, the all-wise, worthy of all praise. But, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the Quran, which he named Al-Aziz, the mighty. Think about this. What is the mightiness of this book. This book has mightiness in so many levels. Of course, it is from the characteristics of Allah. The word of Allah is a characteristic of Allah. His book is from his characteristics. It is 
mighty because it is from Allah. Also, let's go through some of the different levels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us knowledge in this book, constantly telling us throughout the book, do they not think? Do they not reflect? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this because knowledge is power. So that is another level. This book is a healing. This book heals. So there is another level of power. This book shows us the road to Jannah. That is another level of power. If we go through the book of Allah, we will see level after level after level of power showing us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed Al-Aziz. Katada said Allah honored it because it is his speech. Therefore, he protected it from falsehood and guarded it from corruption. Now, it's a clear fact that more than 1,500 years have passed. Not a single word in this Quran has been changed. The disbelievers try their utmost to change it. They try to make people think that there's a problem with it. But subhanAllah, when you go into it and you learn and you recognize, you find that they are liars. You find that they are playing, that they're taking half a truth and playing with it, subhanAllah. And unfortunately, with these games, they're able to take people away from Allah because we don't have enough knowledge to understand that what they're saying is a lie. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Quran that he will guard it. And he has. It is the only book on the face of this earth that has not changed. SubhanAllah, this is the book from Allah. So how do we understand and apply Al-Aziz? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Aziz. How do we apply that in our lives? Well, we can start by seeking our strength from Allah Al-Aziz. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the mighty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the honored. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most powerful. Allah is Al-Aziz. So if we need help, if we need strength in this life, is there not better strength to call on than Allah Al-Aziz? When we have faith in Al-Aziz, it gives us the courage to continue because we know that our Lord is unbeatable. Just in a simple matter, you got into a fight with someone at the, at the market and you want to go back and take your rights. You go home and you get your little group together, your brother, your cousin, your friend, and you guys come in as a group. Why? Because as a group, you feel you have strength. When you want to fight, you bring your little backers with you, right? We go back and look for the, the people who are gonna give us the strength to fight, subhanAllah. This is a life matter. But in reality, if we put our faith in Al-Aziz, it doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter how many, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for us because nobody can beat Allah. Whatever Allah wants to happen is going to happen. If every person on the face of this earth went against me, every human being went against me, but I have Allah on my side, I need nothing else. I need no one else. If Allah wants me to succeed, I will succeed. If I don't succeed, it's because Allah did not want me to succeed in this. And it's better for me to not succeed in this matter. It doesn't matter how many people I got to help me. If Allah doesn't want me to succeed, I will not succeed. And he will not give me success except in that which is best for me. SubhanAllah. So we need to put Allah as the one backing us up. We work to seek his pleasure. We try to get and be confident with his will. And we know that he's going to help us. The help that we get, we may not understand, but we have to trust in Allah. He has power over all things. So whatever happens, if it's not what I want, I will show sabr. 
I will try to be perseverant. I will try to be grateful, have shukr to Allah for whatever happens. But I put my trust in Allah. If I feel that I cannot win, I know if I put my trust in Allah, I will win. Even if it doesn't look like a victory to me today, I am still winning. Why? Because I am trusting in Allah Al-Aziz. He is putting forward what is best for me. Alhamdulillah. I will turn to him for my strength. I will turn to him for my faith. I will turn to him for my honor. I will turn to him to protect me. And I will trust in the method that he chooses for this, subhanAllah. The second way that we can apply this is we need to know our honor is in our belief in Allah. Our honor is in our Islam. When I stand in front of someone, I am a Muslim woman. I should not lower myself in any way, shape or form that shows that I feel that my Islam is less than your whatever. Never. Someone says something about my hijab, I need to say Alhamdulillah. This is what Allah wants from me. Someone says something about the way I put my face to the floor and pray. Alhamdulillah, this is what Allah wants from me. Do not, do not lessen, make less what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made greater. Your name is Muhammad. Do not make it Mo because they can't say it right. Do not make it Mo because it sounds more Western. Do not change your hijab because it doesn't fit into the society you're living in. Do not change your words because Nowadays, this is unpopular words. You want to talk about what Allah says? Do not feel that the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us is less. SubhanAllah. I see people going on the internet and talking about what is and what is not acceptable in terms of gaze, what is and is not acceptable in terms of covering. What is and is not acceptable in terms of, um, what do you call it, death penalty. We dishonor ourselves. We dishonor Islam with our words and with our actions, with our dress and with our manners. Our honor is not in money. Our honor is not in power. Our honor is not in our looks. Our honor is only in la ilaha illallah. How dare we seek honor anywhere else? Be proud. You're not supposed to be proud and arrogant, but you are supposed to be proud of la ilaha illallah because this is the most honorable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what means, take those who take disbelievers for awliya, protectors or helpers or friends instead of believers, do they seek honor with them? All honor is with Allah alone. And what does this mean? This is on so many levels. In a war, an actual physical war, taking non-Muslims to help you kill Muslims, this is not right. In a non-physical war, in just your behavior with others, you're sitting there with non-Muslims laughing at the man with the beard laughing at the woman in a face veil. Why? Because you want them to be your friends. You want to fit in with them. La ilaha illallah, that's the honor. There's only one God, Allah. Love him, seek him, worship him, and know la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. There's no power. There is no capability except through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can not hide from Allah Al-Aziz. Let Al-Aziz make you recognize that no matter who you are, how pious, how high positioned you are, you can never hide from Allah's might and power. 
Allah might let us go for a while and then make an example of us. How many high and mighty have been lowered by Allah? The repetition of Al-Aziz in the Quran can teach us that we have to constantly remind ourselves that we can never go against the will of Allah. He is the mighty and he will be mighty against those who disobey him, who go against him. And again, he lets us go for a while. He gives us power for a while. Anybody that has been to Egypt, you see the power and the might that the Pharaohs had. And now it's just dust and artifacts that people are cleaning off with brushes in the dirt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may let it go for centuries, but Allah is Al-Aziz. He doesn't let people go and do the evil that they do indefinitely. They will meet with Allah. And there is a reason that he has allowed this to go forward. When he allows us to raise and raises us up in power and allows us to be oppressive and allows us to be evil and allows us to harm people, we cannot believe and think we need to know that we will face Allah and we will be questioned about this. And there's a reason for this. Allah gave us this for a reason and our misuse of it will be accounted. Power does not mean honor. We always use our own power or authority in an honorable way if we fear Allah. We need to be using our authority and our power over our children, over our spouses, over our friends, over our workers. SubhanAllah, we act as if we are so religious and when we have even one person under our thumb, we are the most oppressive. Why? Do we think that we are really anything? We are nothing. We need to train ourselves to have the strength to resist the desires, to remind ourselves of the wisdom of Al-Aziz, who uses his power with wisdom and always tries to strengthen others. We need to try to use our voice, our skills, our company, our power to raise each other up, not to bring each other down. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him said, whoever belittles the authority of Allah on the earth, Allah will belittle him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever honors the authority of Allah in the world, Allah will honor him on the day of resurrection. Every single one of us has a tiny bit of power somewhere. Are we being careful with that power? Are we being honorable with that power? Are we utilizing this power in the way of Allah or against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are we doing? We have this obligation. What are we doing? Are we honoring our trusts? Are we honoring the Muslims? Are we honoring those underneath us? The Prophet ﷺ said, all of a Muslim is inviolable to another Muslim, his blood, his wealth, and his honor. We cannot harm others with our tongue. We backbite people. We slander people. We mis misuse their belongings. We expose their faults instead of doing the opposite. You're in a gathering and you see someone is dishonoring or is humiliating another Muslim with his tongue, do we say something? Do we stand up for that person? Or do we sit silently and we share in their dishonor? SubhanAllah. Do we expose the faults of others or do we hide them? How are we using what little power we have over people? How are we utilizing this? Are we utilizing it in a way that brings honor to us and honor to the other Muslims?
to everybody else around us? Are we harming people, believing that anyone is lower than us? We have people who work for us in our homes. We have people who work for us in our companies. How are we treating them? Do they see honor in our treatment? Go back, Indonesia. Again, Indonesia, the largest Muslim country. How did it become a Muslim country? Not by someone going in there and oppressing them, not by armies coming in, not by scholars coming in. It was simple business people who did business with honor, who honored their trust, who treated people with respect and dignity. They had not seen this before and they questioned, why are these people acting this way? And when they saw that it was their deen, their Islam, that made them act this way, it brought them to Allah. SubhanAllah, imagine the barakah on the heads of these business people who went there to make money, who went there to be businessmen and women, now nation, the largest Islamic Muslim nation on earth is Muslim, why? Because of their behavior, because they honored the people. SubhanAllah, what are we doing? How are we treating those around us? You can even earn Allah's protection from the fire by defending someone's honor. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever defends the reputation of his brother, Allah will defend his face from the hellfire on the day of resurrection. When you hear, even if it's true, something bad being said about someone, do you remain silent? Do you help in humiliating, slandering, backbiting this person? Or do you stand up for them and say, at the very least, they are not perfect. We are not perfect. We should not be talking about them. At the very least, stop the conversation. Stop the backbiting. Stop the humiliation. We see someone harming someone else. Do we open our mouth and say, stop, this is wrong. Stop, this is wrong. SubhanAllah, what are we doing? How are we working to defend the honor of your brothers and your sisters? How are we doing that? Allah is al-Aziz. Allah allowed this to happen to that person. But we are making the choice to shut up and say nothing about it. That's my choice. That's your choice. This is a test from Allah. How are we going to live with that test? Are we going to pass it? Or is that test going to be our destruction? SubhanAllah, Allah is al-Aziz. What is happening is because Allah wants it to happen. But what are we doing? How are we acting? How are we reacting? Allah called the Quran Aziz because it is his speech. Allah says, verily, those who disbelieved in the reminder when it came to them shall receive the punishment. And verily, it is an honorable, respected book. Falsehood cannot come to it from before it or behind it. It is sent down by the all wise, worthy of all praise. We need to stop and reflect. The Quran contains everything that we need to succeed in this life because it comes from Allah, our creator. It is our manual. Are we utilizing it as our manual or is it a dust collector on the shelf? Is it something pretty that we use to decorate the house? What is the Quran? Is it something that we read and read and read and don't understand what we are reading? Is it our manual? Are we using it to understand what it is that Allah Al-Aziz wants from us? SubhanAllah. If you want to succeed, we all do. And I know we all do. We want to succeed. We want to be in Jannah. We don't want Jahannam. You don't see very many people standing up and saying, I want to go to Jahannam. I want to go to hell. I want to burn forever. No, we want success. We want Jannah, we want paradise. And we have the means 
We have the path. We have the book. We have the way there and it's simple and it's clear. We need to understand it. We need to implement it. We need to make the Quran the manual for our life and put our reliance on Allah al -Aziz. Nobody can hurt us except the one that Allah wants to hurt us. And if it happens, it's because he wants it and it's good for us. Nobody can stop us unless Allah wants it to be stopped and it's because it's better for us. So put in your mind, in your heart, Allah is Al-Aziz, the most powerful, the most mighty, the most honored, the most wise, the most praiseworthy, the one who will watch out for us, the one who will take care of us, the one who does everything for us, Subhana wa bihamdik, shadu an la ilaha illa amt, wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.